convincing mid game. We'll close this one out. Evos will be eliminated from playoff contention. Một đất một tiêu của vài thất bóng của em đã hết rồi nên ngày mai em sẽ trả thù Vernatic để 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 không không để thua. The undefeated find defeat, and Fnatic serve it up. Quadra kill for Uzi, 8-0 and 3. Royal never give up, 2-0 on the day. A single turret of the Nexus, staying between Liquid and staying alive. Elder Chris, Elder Chris, Elder Chris. And a kill comes through, and Liquid stays alive. The last day it could go one of two ways. You know, we could completely flop, or we could play out of our minds. 虽然说我们输了两场，不过最后一天的比赛我们还是会全力以赴。昨天可以说是就是最难的一天比赛日了吧，因为打 FW 跟 KD 嘛，相信在最后一天的比赛日里面也是可以继续获得连胜的。Oh! Uzi with an expert dodge to get away. Uzi was so good there using his ultimate dodge to scale shot. 남아있는시간동안제품도다끌어올리면서나머지기경기다좋게마무리하고싶어 All of my teammates have tried exceptionally hard to make it to Paris, and I have no intention of letting them down. It's season invitation. 2018's first test of champions from around the globe is missing the titans that have claimed the title in years past. Both China's Edward Gaming and the most successful team in League of Legends history, Korea's SK Telecom T1, failed to qualify this year, which gave the appearance of it being anyone's tournament to take. Still. The world's eyes fell on the representatives from the LCK, King's Own Dragon X, to dominate the competition and claim the mantle of world's best until season's end. However, over 10 days of competition here in Berlin, a new challenger has risen to the top, the LMS's Flash Wolves, a team made up of both veterans whose international experience stretches back to 2013 and newcomers to the world stage alike. This squad is not just here to play spoiler as they have in the past, but to take home a title for their region. Through the group stage, they have gone above and beyond to lead the pack, being the only team to secure their semi-final spot in Paris. And so, on our final day of play, we turn our attention to the four teams fighting for the three remaining seeds. First, among our challengers is the number one team from that historically dominant league, Korea's Kingzone, the pre-tournament favorites. With the legacy of the LCK's five world championships on their shoulders, they must shirk the cold, calculated, and precise style of play their region is known for returning to their roots in an aggressive, dominating show of force if they want to continue Korea's legacy. They'll have to go all in since hot on their heels is the LPL's Royal Never Give Up, a world stage regular since 2013. This team has never had more momentum than they do right now. Considered to be one of the best ever to play in the bot lane, their AD carry Uzi has finally adorned his trophy case with a regional title and now has his eyes set on the international prize. The hometown favorites and season one world champions, Fnatic, are here at MSI for the first time since 2015 after toppling the four-time European title holder in G2 Esports. While they've shown some brilliance here in Berlin, they've also seen some struggles, and now they put their faith in the rising star caps to carry the team to the semifinals. And finally, there's Team Liquid. No longer in the shadow of North America's longtime international representative TSM, this dark horse is still not in control of its own destiny. Despite a rough start, they've clung on to their hopes and fought for their lives to keep the City of Lights on the horizon. We've seen one team do it in the past, make a miracle run after an 0-4 start, and Liquid will have to rise above that very team today to do so. Now there are just six games left to decide which three teams will join the Flash Wolves in the MSI semifinals and add another chapter to the history books. Stay right there, because the action starts right now.
time of groups is upon us. And here on this final day of groups as the teams load in and the fans have packed the studio to cheer them on in their final push for the semifinals. I'm joined by our analysts, Indiana Prosper and Black, Isaac Azale Cummings-Bentley, and Joshua Jett Leesman. I think I still have goosebumps after that intro. <laughs> Great work, Dad. Oh, thank you very much. I mean, it's not hard to do when the tournament has shaped up the way it has. And I'm just saying, yesterday we had two NA analysts on the desk, and we had two Team Liquid victories. I'm liking where your head's at Optimistic here. Optimistic chat right off the top we'll of see the what show. Happens, That's really. what I like to see. I mean, I just think we're, we've been so privileged to have such a competitive event, you know, where five of the teams are still in the running for the semifinals on the last day. Uh, so incredibly excited for the games to start. All right, well, as a refresher, let's bring up the standings to check out where our teams have fallen coming into day five. Yeah, important to point out that only Flash Wolves are actually qualified for the bracket stage right now. There are still four teams that could technically get the number one spot in the tournament. And as Azel mentioned, five teams that can make the knockout stage. And while Team Liquid, you know, can still make the top four, they're not in control of their own destiny because, you know, a 2-0 day from Fnatic, for example, you know, could completely eliminate them from contention. I mean, that said, it's not just Team Liquid that are looking for their hope, their glimmer at their placement. There's also Royal Never Give Up who could possibly take the first place or at least force a tiebreaker for it. Yeah, both RNG and Kingzone do lock with a win today. They're also in contention for a first place, depending on how the games play out. And Fnatic, they'll win with two, or they'll lock rather with two wins, regardless of what the remaining teams do. Yeah, basically looking at everyone, if you're Royal Never Give Up and above, one win will lock you. And if you're Fnatic, obviously since they're in fourth, if they went out, they're fine. That brings us to today's schedule, the final day of the MSI group stage. First up, Kingzone looked to secure a semifinal spot against Fnatic, followed by RNG versus last place Evos Esports. Team Liquid continue their attempt for a miracle run against the top team Flash Wolves before we get our last three regularly scheduled games of the group stage. And you've got to look at strength of schedule when you are coming into the last day here. You know, Team Liquid have a pretty tough road ahead of them. You know, they have Royal Never Give Up as well as the Flash Wolves on the table. And while Fnatic control their own fate, if they go 2-0, they're going up against Kingzone. Yeah, and I'm looking at Royal Never Give Up's schedule with Evos and Team Liquid yesterday. They played the top two teams in the standings, won both games. They're now playing the two bottom teams in the standings. But Frost, when we saw Shahu talking about, yeah, yesterday we had a really tough schedule. Are you worried about a letdown today? Uh, I am a little bit hesitant that maybe the boys will take their eyes off the prize. But ultimately, I just think that with the way that they're playing, if they just continue to form, if they just continue to play around Uzi, they should roll over these last two teams. All right, well, taking these team strengths into account, you guys have given us your predictions for today, so we're going to take a look at those, of course, for all six. What? Okay. <laughs> you guys all agree. I am so I say, this is a joke? disappointed. <laughs> I am actually shocked that you guys also picked TL. Uh, no, no, uh, not. Never mind. I look okay. over. It's like we have, we have three votes for Team Liquid. <laughs> Sitting in fifth <sighs> over the number one seeded team at the moment. Let me grab this one. The important okay. thing to know here is that uh, Jatna can no longer win unless there's tiebreakers. <laughs> unless there's tiebreakers. The last three are not locked. I'm just saying. That's do, true. Do you want to flip flop and just int your score not away? Yet. <laughs> not, <laughs> not yet. Not yet. Give him okay. time. I, I want to grab TL. So uh, the thing is, is looking at Flash Wolves, I feel like Flash Wolves have so many more ways that they could win the game. And from an analytical perspective, you're like, then why would you pick TL? Because TL finally showed what they're good at. And what they are good at, I think, is a perfect mirror to go against Flash Wolves. Play very aggressive. Put priority into that bot lane. Make sure that uh, X Smithy is able to get those clutch moment smites. And Flash Wolves have had a massive problem setting up the Baron. So if TL play to their style, I actually think it's a good kryptonite to shutting down Flash Wolves. I think it's definitely possible. And these predictions would kind of line up for the maximum amount of heartbreak for Team Liquid because in this scenario, that final game would mean Team Liquid could force a tiebreaker with a win. But I also need to point out that none of us including all of the guests, have had a perfect 6-0 prediction day. That's so true. I'm hoping that that last one is wrong That's why for I'm here everyone. for today. <laughs> <laughs> That's why they brought me in. You know, yeah, you best for last. us all with the Team Liquid guesses here, but otherwise, perfect agreement. We'll see how it plays out. Jat mentioned that, you know, uh, it has not played out the way the analysts have predicted so far, and so that's where things could get interesting in this MSI group stage. Yeah, and I mean, it's, it's not just about the Liquid prediction over Flash Wolves. Everyone agreeing that Kingzone is going to beat them as well. That would put them at a 0-4, you know, last four games of, of the bracket, which means they lose their first spot. Uh, they would not be able to pick their opponent in the semifinals. And, yeah. you know, they'd be coming into that semifinal you know, bracket potentially as someone who would get chosen when you're on that bad of a run. Well, right now, it kind of just feels like that Flash Wolves have kind of fallen back to reality a little bit, that they've been figured out or the other teams are at least stepping up to match them in their aggressive early style. Flash Wolves are still a great team, but ultimately this tournament has shown that there's more than just one great team, and now we're looking for the super team. Absolutely. But we kick off the day with Fnatic versus Kingzone, and as the team Teams are ready and loaded up into Champions Select. We're going to hand it off to Quickshot, Vidius, and Kobe for the call. 
Thank you very much, Dash, and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the final day of the group stage here at MSI 2018. There's still a lot on the line. I'm joined by Kobe and Vedias, and we're jumping straight into picks and bands. There's a lot on the line today, Kobe. There really is. I mean, King Zone, there's so much to dive into. They look like much more of a beatable opponent for Fnatic than people would have predicted coming into this turn. That's a line I did not expect. Also, quick update, it is Kuz starting over Peanut today. Vedias, as we look at the draft, what do you make of what to anticipate here? Well, looking at Kuz's regular season and performance yesterday, this man is yet to lose a game in 2018. He's played quite a wealth of champions in the form of Nidalee, Jax, but yesterday we saw him on the Zac. Engage seems to be the name of the game for Kuz. The question is, will he look to replicate that as Kingzone has their rematch versus Fnatic? And they actually gave a lot of insight into why they use Kuz and the differences between Kuz and Peanut in their interview yesterday. He said that BDD specifically will get to tell Kuz and work with Kuz about what he's doing in the early game. Whereas if Peanut is in, then it's mostly Peanut telling BDD what he wants to do and having the team follow up. Look at me, I am in charge now <laughs> and the difference of what the players bring. Of course, you mentioned the Zac. Various, it was Zac being piloted by Peanut. Uh, that didn't help them last time they played Fnatic, and that was how Fnatic was able, one of the ways they were able to twist the screws and pick up a win. Tristana, Ezreal, Sivir, the last bands, as well as a Trundle first pick. I think this is quite interesting because so far this year, Kuz is yet to show Graves on the competitive stage. Even though he hasn't had that many games, Fnatic seems to be challenging the fact that we don't mind if you want to play this champion because we feel that with Trundle right now, it would give us the best possible jungle matchup. And when we're looking at King Zone and the strategies that have been successful for them, it has usually been when they play an offensive tempo, split pushing across the map, you know, one through one, trying to play off early game pressure into an entire map wave presence. And here we go, Camille already locked in. That could be a jungler for Cuz, you know, high tempo ganking, but probably is going to go to Khan. Remember the last time that these two top laners met, Whippo had Khan's number. He was playing the Orn into the Vladimir, forcing him underneath the tower, forcing him back. And that is actually what enabled Fnatic to get a lot of their early game leads. And that's an insane statement to hear <laughs> at this tournament where Khan coming in is supposed to be the number one top laner in the entire world, especially in 1v1 matchups, especially in carry matchups. And Whippo is a rookie here substituting in for Fnatic, but that's just the way that this tournament has gone. Well, where Whippo lacks in experience, he definitely makes up for it in Gusto, that is for sure. Talking about Gusto, wind walls are plenty. There's most likely Caps as Yasuo. I saw Caps in the makeup room this morning, and I was like, hey, you're going to listen to Reddit and pick carries only? No more supports? How about all Yasuo all day? And he was like, well, if they leave it open, <laughs> then I will. And he has lived up to his word. Interesting that they would lock it in so early, but we do know that Caps is not afraid to just blind pick this champion. I feel like that it might shift the priority from BDD into just going for heavy wave clear and roam because he does not want to sit in this mid lane, and that's why Galio is the immediate thought that came to mind. Yeah, there's been so much discussion since Yasuo has kind of exploded in this tournament uh, of all mid laners across the world that aren't even playing right now about, oh, what counter matchups you want to play into it. Um, you know, and Rise was kind of one of the big ones that rose up, but this is very clearly BDD playing for the team. This is it's not about, uh, you know, the 1v1 matchup with Yasuo. Well, when you've got a Kai'Sa and a Camille, I can understand why. Definitely great combinations there. The Jin into Kai'Sa, that's a little bit surprising to me. But with Tristana, Ezreal, and Siva off the table, Reckless has to drop down his priorities. Again, even though Reckless did not have a good performance in his Jin game, Jin has a lot of, you know, early damage, can have a very good lane phase. And that's what people have been looking at when the Kai'Sa is picked. Because Kai'Sa right now, scaling is insane on this champion. So most of the strategies revolve around trying to have a strong laning phase against her, which would also require, you know, a range support or, you know, an advantage support, at least in the two versus two, to try and keep her down and keep her from building into the Rage Blade and into those multipliers. But I'm looking at this composition right now as a whole from King Zone, And right now it's looking like team fighting. Yes, they do have split pushing and one through one options available. But as you highlighted already, Kobe, the scaling option of the Kai'Sar means that getting into these late game fights, Kings don't have a lot of options to start these fights. Whereas Fnatic, they don't have a huge amount of options. Their composition is a little all over the place right now. Exactly, that's been the beauty of King Zone. Even if you want to have a big fight and get five kills, uh, they set it up by splitting across the map so they can get an advantage initiation, they can catch someone off guard. You know, they have the long range initiation 
dream combo of Camille jumping in, yep. Hextech ultimatum, you lock someone in, Galio ultimate comes down, they Ooh. cannot escape the knockup. And so you get yourselves a numbers advantage before trying to kill the rest of the team. I mean, I love that. It, it leans into all the strengths that Kingzone can operate under. Now they've got a Thresh to complement that Kai Sa. Definitely not the pick I was anticipating, but another exciting option for Kingzone. I'm just looking across the draft right now, and you can see so many supports have been banned away. Alistair, Tom, Rakan, Morg, Braun, all taken off the board. And that means that Thresh is a very easy pick. The question is, what do you draft into it? And I think it is the trundle that they could flex down into that support position. Remember, it's not something that we very commonly see. You typically just automatically place it in the jungle. And with the Scion locked in, you have the tendency to put him up in the top lane, and now they could lock themselves in a jungle if they wanted to. It would be interesting if Fnatic lock in another tank here, though. They would be very heavily attack damage. Uh, only little bits of magic damage coming from most of the tanks here. Good thing for them, though, is that Yasuo, of course, is going to take Conquer, so you get yeah. some true damage conversion, and also the ultimate uh, will be able to penetrate armor on your targets. Uh, that being said, though, Galio might be able to be a big boy, and Wait, if they yeah, draft This would be another, Camille Jungle, as you as mentioned. If it gets locked in, of course, let's see what Khan decides to go into the Scion. It will be the GP, so Camille Jungle. And Camille Jungle is a jungle that you want to have a lot of early action on. Sometimes they'll even just do one buff to get level two and go for a level two gank. The hook shot is one of the best ganking abilities that you can have early on in the game, especially when people don't have boots. Very difficult to dodge that ability, and the range is increased when you're going towards a champion, so you have a lot of options. So with the draft that Kingzone have uh, picked themselves up, it is very much geared towards playing at the bottom lane, getting uh, Prey into a good setup, heading towards the mid late game, but also just the amount of globals that they have. You have Engage, you have Lockdown with the Camille Galio, you have the gang playing ultimate to have control over the side lanes, and overall, their scaling towards the mid late game is just terrifying. This King Zone draft just speaks King Zone in spades, playing the one through one, having the ability to fight, and looking at Prey to be one of the big carries. I, I really do like that swap there to have the Camille as a jungle because oftentimes Wait, this is a this is a support stage one. Support Sejuani here, going to be in the bottom Whoa. lane. This is a support Sejuani. He has not swapped. Okay, so how does this change the equation Wait. during the laning phase? Well, it does give a lot of possible setups for uh, ganks down bottom, crowd control, because if you have a trundle pillar coming from the gank, uh, you know, Sejuani can stack up the passives and get her stuns down. But yeah, that is, uh, that is not the norm. Definitely not. Now, let's see whether or not this Glacial Prison will have any impact on any potential tower dives. Ladies and gentlemen, it is a Sejuani support. I'm going to lay the stakes out for this game as simply as I can. If King Zone win, they lock a top four seed and guarantee themselves a showdown in Paris. For Fnatic, if they win, they at least guarantee a tiebreaker game at the end of the regular scheduled group stage. Because, of course, Fnatic will be playing EVO later today. We need to look at Team Liquid's impacts. But let's turn our attentions to this game because I want to remind you guys that Fnatic beat Kingzone the last time they played. Of course, it was Peanut playing Zack in the jungle. It was Khan playing Vlad in the top lane. But Fnatic just played exceptionally well. Yeah, I was kind of impressed with the draft that Fnatic had picked themselves up because last time... Uh, it all started with Prey getting caught out at level one. He gave away first blood. He allowed Fnatic to get a very early lead, especially in the jungle. And then Broxa just controlled Peanut. He stole so many camps. He had full control over the enemy red buff. And he just denied Peanut getting involved in the game as much as possible. And Fnatic, off this early game goal, they never really let it go. And especially looking at the compositions in this time around, even though Cuz is in instead of Peanut like we had last time, especially with Camille, as we've been saying, the early game is so important. And even though we said the Galio, you know, probably not about the 1v1 there with Caps on Yasuo, if you have a Camille, everything changes because there is a lot of kill pressure uh, onto a melee champion in the mid lane if there are two forms of crowd control. You know, Galio can easily set up those hook shots to land. And I love the use the, that Camille has of the trundle pillar itself. Whenever you try to use it up, you can then use it as a slingshot for your own stun. Uh, but I'm fascinated as to how this Sejuani is going to work into the Thresh. Honestly, never really seen it. I've seen it in a few of my own solo queue games, but outside of that, 
you have a lot of engage tools and potential setup for the Jin, but I'm curious as to how it's going to work into this thrash. Yeah, the other thing that's very big about Sejuani and kind of unique to the champion is the passive. Uh, all the extra armor that you're going to get for little bursty trades. So once the passive is up, you can see the blue shield above her head right now. You can try and go for a trade during that duration uh, and then back off afterwards. Jin is an AD carry that's very good at bursty trades. Uh, because he doesn't get more attack speed, though, you always want to be able to use, you know, an auto, a grenade, maybe a W, uh, and then leave it at that and not let the more attack speed-based AD carries have a long time to take advantage. Well, we haven't seen too many trading yet. Praying Gorilla shoved this wave in. They got the early level two. He has one of the early ganks that, Kobe, you were trying to set up during draft, but there is a Fnatic Ward, so Bwipo will have some information. Yeah, Kuz going to walk over here. Bwipo should be just fine. Assuming he respects Coz, you can see he's playing very far away from the river and Coz should read that, okay, Bwipo has a bit of an idea. And now, Kingzone, they're just trying to set up a bit of defensive vision because they recognize, okay, if Broxa knows that Coz is topside, he could look for a couple of invades and we have two camps up available to us. So let's just make sure we have the uh, river warded so we know where Broxa at and what he's up to. Yeah, and that actually gives a lot of information away. Uh, Caps should also know that Coz would be coming from the top side. Well, a little damage going down. Pillar of Ice comes out. Kuz decides to engage. Windwall blocks a lot of damage, and despite Kingzone coming away worse for wear, nothing further than that. Steel Tempest manages to tag, and there we go. An Arctic Assault into Prey. Looking for that Permafrost. Death Sentence will find Hillisang on the Sejuani. Takes a gigantic chunk once that Plasma is bursted down. Now Cousin Broxa, they're gonna trade. There's a fight in the mid lane as well. Trade for trade, smite fight for health. Caps now to 200 HP. Steel Tempest oh. goes out, will not find a target. Cuz flashes over the wall. First blood to Fnatic. They follow up on the bottom lane. Hillisan goes over with the assault. Kings on bounce one back before Broxa jumps BDD down. Fnatic just find three kills four minutes into the game. This is a fantastic early game start for Fnatic, but Kingzone, what was that? Oh my goodness, they wanted to force a little bit too hard, it looked like. And Fnatic with the huge punishment there, getting kills across the river. This is exactly the kind of early game start that Fnatic would want. Getting the Asro ahead, getting him to those early item spikes so you can use him in a side lane, have him be that skirmish master. But to find it this early on, the fact that Kuz sitting in the river alone, trying to go for that trade onto Broxa, let's see exactly what broke down. All right, so again, Broxa here on the trundle, an amazing duelist. Kuz just walks up to him. He does smite, both of them smite yes. the shuttle grab for extra <laughs> health. Uh, but Caps also coming down the river first means that he's gonna be able to finish this one off with his flash and Broxa answering so that even though he does go down. Rox is able to finish that one up as well. And while all that was going on, this is the bot lane play where Kirilla, he's trying to move up to assist Cuz, and he's just not respecting the chase power of Fnatic. So they just secure a very easy kill onto Kirilla. Prey ends up using all of his summoner spells, and now Kingzo's 2v2 is the one that fall behind. Yeah, so much CC in this Jin and Sejuani lane down bottom. Uh, and they're able to use it extremely effectively. You can see there was no hesitation from Hillisang flashing over to finish off the kill for them. Definitely something we've said a lot in the past. No hesitation from Hilly. Uh, it gives Fnatic a 1200 gold lead. And next level, if at level six with Gangplank ulti, with Galio ulti, bot lane party is going to be the uh, flavor of the game, Fnatic just accelerated that tempo. Hillisang, with the help of Sejuani and Bristle, definitely doing a lot of work. And Reckless doing the usual thing. Tier two boots already. He's got those Swifties. And we've seen this sort of zeal item rush gen becoming more and more standard as we see more games at MSI. And now, we've talked a lot about the bottom mid side of the map, but we've also got to keep our eyes on the top side because Khan is playing the Gangplank, something that can have a lot of global pressure due to his ultimate, but typically in the early laning phase, Gangplank struggles against the Scion. If you run Grasp, the matchup becomes a lot easier, but we did see a little earlier on how hard Whipper was able to force Khan out of lane and has now started to build up a very small CS advantage. But even with a CS differential, because Khan has decided to go for Klepto, he should stay relatively even in terms of gold. It's, I just think it's such a big story that Fnatic have gotten this early lead over Kingzone. They're about to get checked at Dragon right now, though. We'll see if they can hold this lead. Oh, just a quick stab before we get into the fight. This could be Fnatic's first Infernal. It is secured and the first of MSI. Broxa doesn't have Flash available to him, so he's stuck inside the pit. They get the GP ult, they get the Galio ult for just the kill. I'm not sure if that's worth it. That is an amazing trade for Fnatic. All right, here we go, though. Okay, the hookshot I thought it was going to be 
uh, towards the mid lane. But that is such a good trade for Fnatic. Those cooldowns you mentioned, Trevor, are very big for King Zone. So much of their playmaking oh, gone. Oh, caps on, flare up. Will be able to get the kill, <laughs> not just yet. Quick one comes in with the unstoppable onslaught. They decide to jump onto BDD, but look at that damage reduction and the taunt. BDD is able to escape. Whippo not going to find the roam. And it's good of Whippo to try this roam because it's one of the things you have to try and do if you're the sign in the top lane. Typically, you have pressure over the gangplank. He has his ultimate to impact the rest of the map, so you've got to use yours by roaming down. BDD had no flash, but he was too close to his tower for Fnatic to secure a kill. So just a bit of pressure gained. And I'm quite interested in how this trade overall worked out because the Infernal will overall benefit Fnatic in the long run. Yeah, I think it's it's so good for Fnatic because if you look at what Kingzone are trying to do, uh, Camille is not going to be able to you know out farm or anything. A lot of her pressure comes from those ganks, comes from the the ultimate combination. So Fnatic I definitely have a lot more breathing room. The Galio ultimate level one, quite a long cooldown. And that's, that's not going to be available for Kingzone in trying to play any sort of surprise uh, plays that they're going to try and pull off. Well, talking about surprise plays, Brox and Kuz are making their way down to this bottom lane. Pry is going to use the E, get the speed boost up and dash to the side. Pry gets away with his life. Kuz has not engaged yet. He's finally joining the fight as the teleports were cancelled. The Hextech ultimatum is dropped onto Broxa. Subjugates by some time, but simply not enough. The crit is not going to kill Pry. And that's going to be an escape. Kingzone get the kill. The teleport is canceled there from BDD, but because Cuz makes it down there, they're actually able to take the kill off of Fnatic and a much needed victory there for Kingzone. Yeah, the arrival of Cuz really did swing that fight. And initially, I thought the setup was great for Fnatic because Kingzone's bot lane had used a lot of their summoners earlier on, but a lot of time has passed. Prey had his heal and the exhaust was back up. Even with no flashes, they were able to maneuver out of that situation and Prey a good use of his ultimate to create space. You can see what Fnatic were thinking, though, and the idea, I think, was correct. Those cooldowns we talked about, the Gangplank ultimate and the Galio ultimate not available, that's your opening to try and make the play bottom. But they were unable to capitalize on it, and that is a huge victory there for Kingzone. See if that is enough for them to stabilize. It keeps the gold very close as we get to 10 minutes. CS numbers even in the top lane, but look, Caps is plus 20 over BDD. As it stands, Reckless with that early kill and the pressure that uh, Gorilla and Prey were under. Also, a small advantage until the wave is cleared. You can see the minions being pushed towards Reckless, so he'll climb ahead momentarily. Also just got told that it was, in fact, Caps that interrupted BDD's teleport, which is why he wasn't able to get down towards the bot side. Ultimately, it did still result in an advantage for Kingzone, but we got to keep track of the gold difference between the two top lanes as well, because one of the big reasons why the gold is being kept so close is the Gangplank. He's staying relatively even with Bwipo in the one versus one, but the Kleptomancy is resulting in a pretty significant gold advantage that is keeping Kingzone relatively close. All right, Pillar into last breath. That's what's going to happen. Pillar comes down, last breath lands. BDD flashes for his life and their support. Here comes Prey with that killer instinct. Caps has already used the ulti and Cuz was around. So anyway, just a trade of uh, uh, ultimates, but BDD's flash. Yeah, because they also rotated there, you lose out on some tempo, and you can see now they're having a hard time getting down to that bottom wave that's oh, been pushed into the oh, turret. There's no teleport on BDD! He finished the recall! Prey is gonna flash to safety, manages to escape with his life. The Ignite is ticking down. Here comes a heroic entrance, and Gorilla escapes with his life. Caps gets one! Oh, is Yasuo is beautiful! Once the Galio ultimate comes down and you see the hook go out from Gorilla, Caps is like, well, I guess I'm in here. I'm going for the dive. <laughs> and he gets two. Wind wall one way, then moving his mouse the entire opposite side of the screen, able to hit Prey as well and pick up the extra kill. Caps on, flares up. Yep. This man is a god. That was unbelievable. What a play from Caps. This is why they ban his Yasuo. <laughs> And of course, on the other side, King Zone, they, they counted as well as they could pray with the insta flash under pressure. But take a look at this replay brought to you by Ace of Predator. So now, Hillisang recognizes he has everything, and King Zone's bot lane just used a bunch of ults. With Galio out of the equation, they think they can chase this. Caps, he commit over commits just a little bit because Gorilla, he's stuck behind the pillar now and doesn't sorry, have the win. Sorry, need another fight, need another fight. Pillar into ultimate. All right, Hextech ultimatum comes down. Kuz is running for his life. Manages to escape for now, and not done yet. Caps gets a knock up with the Steel Tempest. Here comes Broxa, subjugates up in a few seconds. 
And Fnatic, they are playing this one with fisticuffs. Yeah, you're going to have to run once that Conqueror is procced. I mean, there's no way anyone on King Zone ever gets to a tanky state. So it's all going to be about how the crowd control is used. The only one would be BDD if he went uh, for more tanky sets, but there's a trundle on Fnatic's side. So one tank compositions don't really have a lot of effectiveness if Broxa is around to use his ultimate and shred those resistances. Exactly as you said, Kobe. Uh, Camille wants lots of fights. I didn't quite think he maybe would be the one being jumped on as frequently, but Fnatic are using his composition very proactively. Yeah, so I want to take this opportunity because we've had a lot of action in this early game, gentlemen. And in terms of the compositions, what does a lot of this early game mean? Because the thing with Fnatic's comp, uh, comp when you have the Yasuo, he is amazing in the side lane. When you kind of compare him to things like BDD's Galio and Khan's Gangplank, you know he's going to win out on those one versus ones. And typically his laning phase is pretty weak. We don't have time, so there's oh. another fight. We do indeed. The stopwatch is used. The Gorilla stays alive for a few seconds longer, but not too much. Subjugate thrown down by Broxa. Look at the support. Kuz has made his way down. And I'm holding my breath, waiting for an engage, which does not come. Yeah, it was kind of an early subjugate. Uh, I think that they were expecting a Galio ultimate to come fairly soon. But because of the pace of this game, it's not back up yet. Unfortunately, our lovely observers have brought up for us the 1v2 from the Yasuo. You can see, oh, just so beautiful from Caps. I mean, yeah, that's a situation where you have to play well to gain something out of a bad situation, where he's locked under turret, multiple crowd control uh, abilities have been used. Top side, though, Khan also going to have to Pull some fancy moves. He does indeed. Khan is able to sidestep the Cyan ultimate. BDD's completed his teleport. Now, whippo has got flash available to him. And may need to use it. Holding on to his nerve for now. It's still only a thousand gold game and action of plenty. And remember, the Kai'Sa that we warned against in the early game. That once Prey starts to start building up items, it's going to be very scary here. Uh, as the Rage Blade is going to be the first one completed, so he's going to go for the Invisibility upgrade first, it looks like, especially with the Berserker Greaves already grabbed. I will say that Kingsman's composition overall is still relatively squishy. They have no frontline tank. You always look at Galio and think he is kind of tanky. The Taunt gives you a lot of damage reduction. His ultimate in there as well. But he usually builds full AP. And going for an early Rod of Ages is what it looks like. You would expect BDD to continue that trend. And for a Yasuo, that's only going to make his side lane and late game even more threatening. Yeah, people often oversimplify the term scaling. Uh, you can, and they always look at damage scaling. You're like, oh my goodness, a Camille? That's a good one for scaling. Can do a lot of damage. Gangplank can do a lot of damage. Uh, you know, Kai'Sa as well, but tank scaling is also very important. And as we mentioned before, the Trundle ultimate uh, definitely throws another wrinkle into it. So you have to be very cautious about oversimplifying those sorts of things. Currently, though, a lot of pings here around the Cloud Drake as they move into the river for vision. Looking at the minimap, Fnatic got a number of wards. Tower First Blood is still available. Brox is going to challenge Kuz for this blue buff, or as I thought he was, before he decides to back away. Looking at Hilly and Reckless's positioning, they're still just pushing Kingzone back. If Fnatic's main goal is to secure this bot tier one, uh, Kingzone have really uh -oh. struggled. Just a bit of trading back and forth. Kingzone have really struggled so far to utilize their globals to force plays in the bot, but both are available right now. We could see another fight. We can indeed. Kuz is already going to be jumping onto Caps. Caps will get bursted down before this fight has even begun. Gangplank ulti thrown into the tri bush and Kuz, along with King Zone, equal a kill score five to five. Very good use there by King Zone, playing counter uh, to Fnatic's aggression. While Fnatic were split up on two different fronts there, and now on top side as well. A little bit of trading back and forth. I think that barrel was just killed as Bwipo takes it down, and that means King Zone take the gold lead. I feel like King Zone just read Fnatic's game plan like a book. They recognized that they're going to send full members, but BDD was in a position to ulti and counter engage, and King Zone just preventing Fnatic from finding the early map control that they want. The gold is now dead even, and King Zone in this kind of position are much more favored when trying to force plays and force fights. Yeah, the game stayed very similar still, as the first turret bonus gold is a huge objective. In addition to the Cloud Drake being active right now, means that the bottom side of the map is going to be the focus. It will. Kaz goes in with that sweep. And uh, no ultimate available to him. BDD was making his way first to leave mid lane. The other thing is that League of Legends definitely has different you know, power uh, swings here. As both ultimates were used, you mentioned the Gangplank and the Galio, now Fnatic uh, could return to the same objective and not have to worry about those uh, King Zone ultimates that they just previously were punished by. 
Now, Fnatic, they can very easily set up for this tower because they know the ultis are down. They have full vision on where BDD is, and with Prey and Gorilla going back to base to finally pick up their Rage Blades, Fnatic secure themselves the first tower along with the early cloud. Second Drake of the game. Fnatic take first tower in five out of the nine games that they have played thus far. And while all the Fnatic are down in the bottom lane, Khan's just gonna sneak away the Sentinel. He's gonna be climbing ahead as far as the gold is concerned with the Klepto and the Bank Plank. He's already 1,700 gold up over Bwipo. And we need to keep a very close eye on how he puts those powder kicks together as these skirmishes and mid-game fights play out. And he is the reason why the goal looks so close right now, because look, the difference between the supports, you can see the big, uh, or the, the slight increase for Reckless in the mid and jungle as well. And it's basically just Khan making sure that this early deficit that Kingzone found themselves in is not as extreme as you would think. And Kingzone fans are gonna be very critical of Khan if he's not able to chain barrels to the back line and deal the, the necessary damage to Caps and Reckless, the important carries on Fnatic later in the game. Khan has had a very up and down tournament so far, not really performing to expectations. And since he is the one here on game plank really stacking up for the team, he is definitely gonna have to perform this time around. And both teams really want this win as well because Fnatic, they wanna create a larger gap between them and Team Liquid. If they find this win here, then Team Liquid are forced to win both of their games to even have an opportunity for the tiebreaker. Whereas Kingzone, they're looking to secure themselves that semi-final spot and potentially contest the first place seed. Most definitely, that's where they imagine themselves being and kind of their rightful spot. Currently, starting up the Rift Herald here for Fnatic, they retain control of the neutral areas of the map. Looking for the challenge, though. Big chunk of damage onto Prey. Needs to use that supercharge once again to escape. He's got the Rage Blade picked up, and I think Broxa went for the smite there because hops over the wall, hops back out, and pretty easy escape. But look at Fnatic, they've grouped They've got some presence in the mid lane, and they may set up for the tower. I think they're going for engage under Reckless. Reckless with a very early flash. Gangplank ultimate comes down. Whipper waiting in the wings. Now, he's locked in place by the Hextech ultimatum. Remember, Sijuani ultimate not available. Whipper caught in the winds of war and sent into zombie mode. And the reason for that early flash is because they knew the engagement was coming. If you get locked in from Hextech ultimatum, guaranteed death there from the Galio combo. Fnatic do trade on top side, but Kingzone aren't done pushing. No, they're not. Uh, Arctic Assault to dodge that death sentence. Fnatic trying their best to defend the wave. The bouncing grenade does some work, but a deadly flourish will not lock down anybody from Kingzone. Kingzone are backing away. Look at the teleport from BDD. I believe that's to stop Caps, and yes, it is. He's chipped a third of the HP in the top inner. So Fnatic, they didn't quite have the wave clear to keep Kingzone from pressing their advantage in the middle lane. So by keeping Caps towards the top side, they forced BDD to respond. And at the very least, Fnatic was sitting there like, okay, we either defend our turret or they trade. And that was the best case scenario, especially seeing as throughout that entirety, Khan was just sitting in the bot lane pushing. Here's another look at it. As you said, Reckless gonna early flash so he doesn't get locked in. Then, Whippo trying to play the front line him. Uh, Kingston are like, all right, we'll take what we can get. Tanks are nothing here to Kaisa, and the rest of the team jumps right in on it. Good use of the ultimate there from Prey as well to interrupt the ulti from Whippo so that he couldn't get out of that situation. Flashes were burnt on the side of Fnatic, and Reckless, he won't have that available the next time Cuz wants to try and set up this engage. It's something that we see really differentiate the skill uh, on the players of Kaisa here. You can use your killer instinct to jump to different sides of champions. Uzi did yesterday, dodging skill shots with it, uh, and Prey here as well. I'm gonna take us back to something that Vedius was talking about a few moments ago in terms of the standings. As you rightly mentioned, Vedius, for Kingzone, win and you're in. You guarantee top four, and then it's, it's battle for seeding as the day goes. For Fnatic, at least you guarantee yourselves a tiebreaker if they can win this game. You can see how close Fnatic and Team Liquid are. Four and four, three and five. And as each of the games go through, we'll keep updating you on the stakes and how it impacts everybody else. For now, Fnatic, they're not done. Look in the middle lane, they're putting some pressure on, and they've still got that Rift Herald if they need it. And Kingzone are the team that should be setting the side lanes up a little easier before these mid lane confrontations. They have the Galio, the ultimate is coming up very soon for BDD, another 20 seconds or so. But Fnatic actually, good job here, not letting them get those 20 seconds. Rift Herald activation should push it enough that Kingzone won't quite have it. All right, Galio ultimate is available if Kingzone fancy a chance, but uh, 
Fnatic have peeled away. They just let the bop take the tower down. Now, I feel like we're reaching a point in the game where you ideally want to keep Caps in the same lane as Khan. Because in terms of the 1v1, Whippo shouldn't really be able to hold down the gangplank anymore. Two items have been completed, 225 farm, level 14 gangplank is a terror for the Scion. Whereas Yasuo, with the Infinity Edge and the Phantom Dancer done, he should hold his own much better relative to Whippo. And you can see Kingzone, how, how well they know how to play this style. The patience there, even because it's another five more seconds left on the cooldown, they don't overcommit to trying to defend that mid lane turret. They don't try and force it there. They know they have the time to try and push out and create a better opportunity for themselves. Does this kill the whole wave? Wow, would have answered grenade. Two, well. three. No four for Jin. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting for that final number, Kobe. That's a baby rage for Jin. <laughs> yes, indeed. Talking about Jin, by the way, Essence Reaver and Rapid Fire Cannon. Prey has just completed the Hurricane to go with the Rage Blade. So two item spikes across the board. And Baron becomes the next thing you start thinking about over the next few minutes. Exactly that uh, quick shot, because we're just looking at all the vision that has been set up around the top side of the map. Control wards largely littered the river from Fnatic, but Kingzone have been able to clear some of that out. Botline, I believe, is slightly pushing in favor of Kingzone. Uh, and with Teleport on Whippo, they can just send him down to answer that. And with the Drake up, though, I wonder how hard Kingzone will look for a fight. All right, Flash not available and Reckless. He's already been chunked down and is killed. So much damage from Kingzone. They find a second and a third, and they might be peeling back for Baron. Huge team fight for Kingzone. They have the Baron in their eyes. Even though it's early into the game, they can capitalize on the flash that's reckless, and now they're looking to take control. Again, the patience to look for a better setup, and they force the fight when Caps is in base. Now Baron is started. Broxa did it twice yesterday, and he might need to do it again. There's a flash and a smite available. Killer Instinct not yet used by Prey. 3,000 hit points on Baron. Hop over the wall. Broxa's the target. Caps trying to zone away. That's a dodge away from the side. Baron is still being triggered as Caps goes down. Broxa will get killed, and Kingzone turn back to Baron. Fnatic are not given the opportunity to steal away the Baron as Kingzone. They kill all five members. They have the Baron in their eyes. And this will be Kingzone taking full control of the first game of the day. And a Baron buff on this team is going to empower their split push so much. We'll see how much they can actually get out of it. There's a tremendous amount of standing gold in these turrets uh, for them to try and mine. This could be a very big swing in power for the game. And it's just Kingzone utilizing their composition so effectively. Just recognize where Gato is on the map right now. He doesn't have the teleport to get involved. The long range E from Kuz enables him to get on top of Reckless, who is alone in the middle lane. Yeah, even though Caps Recall is on a ward and Kingzone have no way of knowing that he was in base, they see in the middle lane a good opportunity and they're able to jump on it immediately. Now let's see what they can do afterwards, though, with their winnings. So King Zone jumped to 4,000 gold up. They've got pushing lanes. They took that mid outer turret as well while we were in the replay. And as far as Baron control goes, King Zone remain the number one team. They've secured 10 more than any other team and only conceded four. Was it conceded the lowest amount, despite the fact they have three wins to their name? Khan is split pushing right now, and it's hard for Fnatic uh, to push here on a Baron. So they're maybe going for a tower dive. That would probably be their only out. All right, Glacial Prison is available. Here comes the unstoppable onslaught. BDD body blocks it for now. A deadly flourish by some time as Caps is trying to get damage on the back end, but he's forced to use that stopwatch. Not going to be enough. They can't get through the single tank. Now Brox is in trouble. Kingzone fly halfway across the rift just to shut him down. It's a double kill for Prey. Yeah, they force themselves into a no-win situation here. Cuz now is still on the chase, and I believe he saw Hilly. Yeah, BDD even teleported into Fnatic's base. The inhibitor turret will fall very, very shortly while Kuz is jumping onto him. Prey coming down as well to finish it. Uh, Arctic Assault not going to get him over the wall. Another kill to Kingzone. 15 in the game as well as an inhibitor. One Baron has snowballed out of control in favor of Kingzone. Fnatic, they're struggling to find answers. We talked about how their composition was a little bit all over the shop, whereas Kingzone's was fluid. You group up, you force fights, and they found those fights multiple times throughout this game. Yeah, and Kingzone, with their split push, preparing this, forcing Fnatic's hand, because of the Baron Empowered split on the top lane there from Khan, there was no other option for Fnatic. You have to try and force the fight, but that's right into Kingzone's hands. 
Such a good job by Kingzone. The game now looks insurmountable, and he has a replay of that tower dive. So, Kobe, you already highlighted it. Basically, Fnatic have to go for an all-in. Reckless is the damage from the long range, but it's Galio soaking up the brunt of it, while there's a tower on top of it. Even though the Gangplank takes a while to join the fray, his ulti is available, the tower acts as the fifth man, and the moment he TPs in, the fight is already won. This is what people so often complained about when, uh, when playing against Korean teams, is they force you into these no-win situations. You're choosing between two very bad choices for yeah. yourself, and they're able to get a lot out of it. One inhibitor down on top side now. I mean, we saw Caps using that last breath onto BDD and not getting the damage dealers on the back line. And we're in the 30-minute mark. You've got two physical damage dealers that are 8,000, 9,000 gold down the opposite number. And while there is a kill now onto Kuz, this will alleviate some pressure. Fnatic need more. They need to do more. The death sentence bought some time. Prey uses the killer instinct to jump backwards as BDD joins the fray with the heroic entrance. In a five on four, Fnatic still can't find the damage. Reckless needs a front line to get those shots off. BDD trying to jump onto Hellas saying, nah, I'm waiting for that taunt. We'll lock him down. Winds of War and an auto takes him out as Khan is trying to steal away Wolf Camp. Caps now gonna be jumped on by at least one carry. Prey will just run him down shortly. Caps, I think, trying to stack up that Q. 1v3 all of a sudden. Lost Breath still not available. It should just be a matter of time. And despite all the damage that Caps has, he's going to look for at least one kill. Steric's Cage buys some time. Jeez, Caps, never say die. Finally, Prey takes him down. He does his best to buy time for his team, but you're seeing how difficult it is for this Yasuo pick to work against the King Zone competition. Composition, rather. It feels like they came in well prepared, and Prey, even in a four versus five situation, deals so much damage and position so fluidly, the Fnatic cannot stop him. Yeah, it's not just Prey either. Khan there with some big AoE on the Gangplank allows them to win that 4v5. The Galio ultimate came down as well. And now Kingzone still pressing the attack here, knocking at the doors. Their bottom inhibitor turret is the next target. It's gonna be a difficult defense. Well, from what we've seen from Fnatic, they're gonna be willing to throw down. But it's exceptionally difficult with such a difference in itemization and gold, especially for Whippo. He just can't stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with all the damage oh, dealers. That was Kingzone. a bit of a bait. Well, let's see what happens here. Yeah, Kingzone, they make the death bush work and they shut down Hillisang. Oof, another pick found for Kingzone. They don't need to back off right now. They could even run for a potential dive as the top lane is pushing in in favor of Kingzone. Fnatic, they're on their last leg. They really, really are. Kingzone looking to finish this game. Look at all the kills and assists for BDD, Prey, and Gorilla. 15, 18, 18 across the board. This could be the final fight here as Kuz decides to jump in. 13 seconds before Hillisang can join the fight and Fnatic are able to clear the wave. That will delay King Zone for now. It's only 30 minutes in, 11,000 gold. But guys, we talked about picks and bans and how King Zone's comp really wants to get prey ahead. Use that Galio, use the Thresh. He's doing pretty well, and that's why there's a mountain of a gold deficit. Yeah, that's one of the things about Gangplank as well. You know, the ultimate uh, helps get your bottom side ahead. If, if Gangplank's not pressured in the 1v1, then he just farms up and he becomes an extremely strong carry as well. And Kingzone have been utilizing their guaranteed Camille Galio combination extremely well. Fnatic at a 10,000 gold deficit. In terms of options that they have available, they're rather limited. In terms of the 5v5, we've seen multiple times Fnatic have struggled to come out ahead. Even though Yasuo would be strong in the 1v1, uh, with his Guardian Angel completed, I don't think that that's going to be enough, considering that their top inhib is down right now and Baron is spawning in about 20 seconds. So for King Zone, they're likely just going to secure that objective and then look to start the siege once more. For any North American fans watching this game, they have gigantic grins on their faces. If King Zone close this out, Fnatic will have the same number of losses as Team Liquid. That makes the Team Liquid games all the more interesting as we play out for the day. King Zone, however, will clinch top four. And that means there will be three teams doing battle for the final two seeds. Fnatic are not done yet. 
They're going to start challenging and threatening around Baron. Teleports up for Khan though, and he's in the bottom lane. Again, it's that situation. Kingzone forcing Fnatic. All right, take a look at this. Kaz has already found Reckless. Reckless is jumping backwards. He's gone golden to survive a few seconds longer. Kaz goes down. GA is popped. Reckless is jumped on by Bray, and he survives long enough to turn around. Kaz has respawned, and Fnatic's frontline are doing work. Look at the shots. One, two, three, and four. Fires. Not going to be enough to take down Kaz. Zombie oh. Propo interrupted. And now Broxa and Reckless running for their lives. Fnatic almost winning this team fight, but at what cost? And BDD is going to be the bouncer there, trying to zone Reckless out of his own base, so he's going to walk into the bottom jungle and not allow them home. It started so good. Take a look at Reckless, looking for the shots. Not enough crit. Gorilla survives. The goal difference is simply too big. A flash from Broxa means BDD won't take him out. Importantly, nobody got the Baron, but now look at the death time is 40 seconds for Reckless. Kingzone have a minion wave in the bottom lane. They have four members. While Kingzone won't secure the Baron, they should take more of the base from Fnatic. It was a very close fight, but it is still the LCK's representatives that come out on top. Two inhibitors now down for Fnatic, and Kingzone should be able to reset after this, head straight over to Baron where they have their control wards. It seems like they have a pretty clear path here towards the end of the game. Oh, man. Fnatic, if they were not 10k gold down, they hadn't uh, slowly fallen to pieces. But here's a replay of that Baron fight. So the big thing is the Trundle Pillar here onto the Galio, preventing him from getting involved in the middle of the fight. And Reckless could then reposition. Then you have the damage from Hillasang and Reckless coming out onto Prey to burst him down. And then you have the Yasuo, who's really struggling to have an impact on the fight as he's fighting both Khan and the Baron. And unfortunately, he cannot turn the fight in his team's favor. As you mentioned, the team fight gold difference is just too big in favor of Kingzone. And now they can just reset as they gear towards the Baron. Yeah, time is not working in Fnatic's favor. The super minions are pressing in, and Kingzone pretty much have the Baron already. Yeah, completely unchallenged. 14,000 gold up. That gives them 11 Barons across the nine games that they've played. Conceded only four. And for Fnatic, Supers in the bottom lane will be there for a few minutes longer. I think the top lane should respawn relatively soon, in fact, if there's any silver lining. But it just it just doesn't feel like a Jin on the defensive against all of these divers and damage has enough bullets in that gun to take them out. It's also extremely difficult for Caps to be able to contest in these team fights. Like, you're being forced multiple times into a 5v5, and with Kingzone's comp, Yasuo just cannot consistently get the damage out. Oh, swing and a miss from Hellasang. That Glacial Prison did nothing. Kaz jumps onto Hilly. He's forced to retreat. Look at the Fnatic health bars. They are obliterated. Khan flashes in for the parlay, but it's not a parlay he's looking for. It's the death of Fnatic. Whippo's the last man standing as Kingzone are wrecking the base. Death Sentence will even connect, and Zombie Whippo watches Prey take him down. Nexus turrets are dropping, and Kingzone crush Fnatic to qualify for the semifinals. Expertly played by Kingzone there in the late game after they got that engagement. And that's why we really highlighted that early start from Fnatic and how they would really need to run with the advantage that they had. Yeah, I mean, I love the draft from Kingzone. I think it made a lot of sense. I think it played very nicely into the strengths that Fnatic have demonstrated this tournament. The fact that Reckless was put on the gym made it even harder for him to properly execute. And while we saw one good team fight at the very end, Kingzone, they just found multiple fights and they won off a relatively clean game. So, Kingzone join Flash Wolves in the top four. The battle for seeding gets very interesting. And this now puts so much pressure on Fnatic and Team Liquid. Two teams that are the closest to securing that fourth seed. The, the, the two teams that are the closest to being maybe bumped out of contention. Fnatic yesterday looking likely to take third or fourth, and now today, maybe fourth or fifth. Yeah, Team Liquid fans are also very big EVOS fans because EVOS are playing against both Fnatic and RNG. Yes. And if they can take those games and get the opponents a little bit closer in the standings, that would really open the door. It really, really could. Uh, gentlemen, thank you very much. We're going to head over to the State Farm Analyst Test to wrap up game number one.
Thank you very much. Quick shot. A tough loss for Fnatic as Kingzone lock in their semifinal spot with that victory here. And right off the top, I just want to talk about this very intriguing champion select put together by both of these squads. Yeah, I think you have to start with draft. And the immediate thing that, that I think is going to pop out to everyone, especially us, was the Sejuani. And when it got locked into the support position as opposed to the jungle position, because I was like, yes, Trundle support, you know, it's about time. And I can understand why they went away from the Trundle support. You know, there's not a lot of tanks on, on Kingzone's composition. He wasn't going to get super value yeah. there because the thing about putting him in support is he can be low econ and still uh, shred a lot yep. by not having the gold to build those tankier items that he gets from the jungle. So it allowed them to keep priority in the jungle because Trundle stays there and it gives them a lot of all in engage potential by having Sejuani in that support. Yeah, and I think even just looking at the bottom lane in a vacuum, the Sejuani support can work because... Mm -hmm. The Kais is a pretty short range AD carry, and Thresh oftentimes isn't able to break the Sejuani shield. So when you opt into the 2v2s or you have gank assist, it can work. And that's why we actually saw them getting some kills early. But where my problem is with the draft, and Azel can get into it in a bit, is how it interacts when you actually get to team fights. Because this is clearly something that can work for Fnatic, has probably worked for them and won them many scrims, but not specifically against what Kingzone drafted. Yeah, I mean, I, I think they were actually expecting that Kingzone may be committing more to split push, and then you have essentially your Scion, you have the Sejuani, you have a lot of hard engage, you can maybe dive the turrets and actually punish them uh, for splitting up, but instead, Kingzone is just bringing the fight to them, and when you're being hard engaged on, uh, the Sejuani doesn't really offer that much in the way of peeling. You know, they're... The Camille comes in, the Gangplank Ultimate gets dropped, the Ultimatum gets dropped, the Galio is coming in. How do you peel for your AD carry in this situation? There's really nothing the Sejuani can do from there. And it's also extremely difficult for a Yasuo, even with Cleanse, when there's that much CC. So to me, it feels like it's it's one of those things where maybe you're kind of overthinking it or trying to be a little bit too clever when just something uh, more standard, like a disengaged support, could have been a lot better there. An Alistar, you know, even like a, a Janna yeah. or things like that. And we'll see examples of where that maybe wanted to come into play. But early on, in this game. Things looked good for Fnatic, picking up some early kills, getting their carries rolling. And this is kind of where you talk about it, Frost, with this engaged potential, right? It seems like they're off to the races. And the thing is, is a lot of people don't really equate for the burst potential that can come out of Sojuani. That said, this does start initially with the jungle mid duo, but this is where this composition can be very strong, especially in the early game. And it makes sense. Kingzone's comp isn't supposed to be online right now. So Fnatic, they see their window, they have the aggressive jungler in Trundle, and they have no problem pushing into the river and trying to catch Kingzone off guard. Yeah, and more so than I feel like any other game we've seen this tournament, Offense is just rewarded so much over defense. These are two compositions that really can't play defense at all with the Sejuani support. It can't just throw an alt into a Camille with a Galio coming in on top. They have to be offensive. So when Kingzone actually just grouped, which isn't your immediate thought with the GP Camille composition, you're thinking that's still push, but it was when they grouped is when they find easy success. Right, they started to find their team fights around that 20 minute mark. 23 minutes is where they pick up three kills in the mid lane, plus a Baron, and now they're in control of the game. Yeah, and I mean, what is really big here is, despite the good flash, you know, kind of like earlier getting away from Reckless, his summoner cooldowns were down. There's no way out when you don't have those summoners, and Caps was actually, you know, basing on the top side of the map. So as, as soon as he is not there, they pull the trigger, they get three kills. And yeah. the thing is, I know a lot of people will also look at Reckless's champion pool and be like, why did you go for the Jin again? It's not working for you. I think he played the Jin as well as he could have into the situation that he had. Like Camille, Galio, that's going to be very tough. But ultimately, I think that there is a ban strategy against Fnatic now. That was Sivir and Tristana, and then they also banned Ezreal from blue side because yeah. they prioritized the jungle matchup. And maybe they have to throw out that Ezreal blue side ban and start prioritizing that for Reckless, especially if teams are going to continue to play this much dive, this much aggressive forward action. I also want to put a little bit of focus on to how well Kingzone actually played around the Baron once they have the advantage, no chance of a 50-50, going over the wall, taking out the remaining members of Fnatic, essentially getting the delayed ace and the Baron. And, and that's more what you need to see, you know, and, and right. what some teams have failed to do uh, to kind of really check all the boxes and, and, and make sure that Brox has no chance to steal it because he's shown he will if he's given one. All right, well, with that, Kingzone does lock their semifinal. Of course, Team Liquid fans are going to be very happy to have seen this because it does open up some more possibilities for them to catch Fnatic in the standings. Yeah, and this only begins what could be a very crazy day because Kingzone has underperformed almost everyone's expectations but with two wins today and a couple of Flash Wolves losses, 
they can still be first. That's insane. That's just an insane thought that that could actually. They've be only a lost reality. three games. Is, three I'm, games feels like a, way more than we expected them to lose. <laughs> it's like, oh man, they're just, you have this perception they're subbing out junglers. Right. You're wondering what's happening with the team, and it's like, yeah, they're one game out of first, and they have as many wins as Flash was right that, now. That that is them being a mess, though. Their yeah. their best level is so much above, I think, uh, what a lot yeah. of the teams are in in the competition. That even if they're struggling, they're still amazing. Yeah, you mentioned bringing in the sub jungler. Cuz did play in this yeah. game. It's time for us to head over to Shocks and see what King Zone's jungler says after that win. Thank you very much. I am here with Cuz after Kingzone got their revenge over Fnatic. This was the game your team lost a couple of days ago. So what was the mindset going into this one? And can you tell me specifically about the Camille pick in the jungle? Uh, 좀 제가 솔랭에서 많이 썼던 픽이고 자신 있어 하는 픽이라서 썼던 것 같아요. 그 질문 다시. 아, 그팀 약간 어, 멘탈이 어땠나요? 이번 경기에 아, 나오시면서. 저희 멘탈이 살짝 처음에 삐끗해 가지고 조금 안 좋아질 것 같았는데 생각보다 다들 멘탈 잘 잡아 줘 가지고 멘탈 좋은 상태로 계속 게임 이어 이어 나가서 이긴 것 같아요. So uh, uh, first, about my camel jungle. So I was really confident. I played a lot my solo queue. That's why I picked her. And about our team mindset, we are a bit worried, but we succeeded in put, putting ourselves together and we came back, so that went well. You also have now two wins and two times you've played with the team. What is it like for you to sub in knowing that you haven't necessarily played that much with the team on stage and possibly not even in scrims? 사실 서브로 오셨는데 연습도 많이 못 하셨을 것 같은데 이제 어떤가요 경기를 해보니까? 연습을 많이 못 하긴 했는데 그래도 꾸준히 연습해오고 옆에서 봐왔던 것도 있고 이제 저, 같은 정글 라이너인 피너 형이랑 또 얘기도 많이 하면서 좀 많이 배우기도 하고 서로 얘기도 나눈다 보니까 이렇게 또잘할수 있었던 것 같아요. So it's true that I haven't practiced a lot, but still I was always with them during the practice. I watched their videos and I talked a lot with Pina that helped me a lot. And that's why I was able to play good on stage. And you played very well. And this also means that you guys are now officially locked in for the top four, the semifinals in Paris. Is there a team you would like to avoid and why? 아 이번 경기 우승함으로써 이제 진짜로 준결승 확정된 건데 아 정말 이 팀은 만나기 싫다 약간 이런 팀 있나요? 음. RNG한테 역전 당한 기억이 있어가지고 RNG 팀이랑 별로 RNG 팀좀 잘하는 것 같아요. 우지 선수가 특별히 그래서 RNG를 좀 깊이 하네요. Um, so I want to avoid the RNG because Uzi is really good and I have some memories of where well, they got um, kind of, uh, we got swept by RNG once. So yeah, uh, Uzi is scary, so I want to avoid RNG. <laughs> Uzi is scary, RNG to avoid, fantastic. Thank you very much. Congratulations on locking that spot in the semifinals. We are going to take a quick break. We'll be back after the break with more MSI 2018 action. Light is ticking down. Here comes a heroic entrance and Gorilla escapes with his life. Caps gets one. Oh! Oh, Caps is Yasuo is beautiful. Oh, oh shit! Kingzone will look for a fight. All right, Flash not available and Reckless. He's already been chunked down and he's killed. So much damage from Kingzone. They find a second and a third. A deadly flourish by some time as Caps is trying to get damage on the back end, but he's forced to use that stopwatch. Not going to be enough. They can't get through the single tank. Kaz goes down. GA is popped. Reckless is jumped off by Bray and he survives long enough to turn around. Kaz has respawned and Fnatic's frontline are doing work. Look at the shots. One, two, three, and four. Fires. Not going to be enough to take down Kaz. Nexus turrets are dropping and Kingzone crush Fnatic to qualify for the semi-finals.